All righty, folks. Welcome to the May 14th, 2020 Kansas City Virtual Community Group Meetup and Regional. I'm sure we have folks from other areas outside of Kansas City. Um, uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for taking the time during uh, your busy, busy, busy days uh, to come join us and uh, talk Salesforce, talk Trailhead. We've got an awesome agenda today, uh, so hopefully you're excited about that. Um, for those of you who are new or don't know me, I am Jeff Berger. I am the Salesforce Administrator at Academy Bank and one of the co-leaders of this group. Mr. Dale Ziegler, the Senior Business Analyst at Seven Summits, is also here. Um, he is the other co-leader of this group. Uh, he was instrumental in putting this session together, so thank you, Dale. Um, we are going to be recording this meeting. We are recording this meeting, I guess I should say. So if you are not comfortable with being recorded, uh, please, please drop off. We don't want you to feel uncomfortable. Um, we will post this recording. So if you still want to see the content, but don't want to be recorded, uh, now's your chance to drop off and then we will get the recording out um, to definitely everybody who RSVP'd, uh, but probably even uh, more than that, we'll post it in the community group. Uh, and might have been posted on Twitter if I can remember the login credentials. Um, and I cannot <laughs> emphasize this enough. Hopefully by the end of the day today. <laughs> yes, very busy days for both Dale and I. So we'll uh, we'll cross our fingers. Uh, but can we can we say by the end of the week, Dale? How do we feel about that? Gee, that's tomorrow. I don't know. That's uh, oh. yeah. Well, that'll be end of week. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Uh, that sounds awesome. Um, obviously, we, we have lots of good, we're, we're all used to this by now, right? We're two months in. So if you're on this call and you are not speaking, please mute yourself so we don't get any feedback. Um, I'm looking through the list right now and I see that everyone has already done that. So thank you for being uh, good Zoom guests and good participants uh, by muting yourself. Uh, but this is, you know, this is a conversation. So if you want to say something, unmute yourself. Uh, and don't forget that you were on mute um, before you started talking. For those who don't know yet or haven't joined, we do have a Slack channel. It's new-ish. Um, I feel like, Dale, I, what? I feel like we get like one request a week or something like that for the Slack channel. We're up um, to about 10 or 12 people. I think we're going to need to get some fun content out there and then uh, rope in the masses. But it's, yeah. uh, it's growing slowly. It's coming. It's coming. So uh, join us on Slack. Um, we're all sitting at home. And who doesn't want to be entertained on Slack? So um, come hang out with us um, and you know, bring your questions, bring your funny gifts. Uh, over the Slack, um, uh, just send an email like it says on the slide. Um, I know we got one just this morning, Dale. Friendly reminder uh, that this is not the only group in town. Um, so this is the administrators group um, and that is the meeting you're in right now. Uh, but we have some other groups um, and marketers is asterisk there because we actually have two different marketing groups. Um, so if you go to bit.ly slash KCTBC, um, you're going to be able to, yeah, don't forget that's all caps, you're going to be able to uh, sign up for any one of these groups or all of these groups um, so that you make sure you receive notifications the next time these groups are going to meet. Um, I don't know if we have any other uh, leaders of these groups or folks who want to speak about these groups on the call, but if you do and you have something coming up that you want to advertise, um, I'd love to open the floor to you for a moment and let you say your piece. Anyone from the developer group out there? We should, once, also, go twice. we should also back up uh, a step and say that just because yeah. we're called the admins group, we are um, we're, we're fighting the good fight with Salesforce to be officially renamed a community group because we have always been a group of all of us. Um, so if That's you're true. a developer, That's, if you're a marketer, yes. don't be scared off that we're calling this the admins group. Everyone is welcome here. I, I would put that in big bold letters on my whiteboard wall if I could, but everyone is welcome here. That is something that is very near and dear to Dale's heart. He, uh, he, he had a lot of heartburn when they changed that name on us. So uh, we are still trying to get that change. You're right, Dale. Um, and absolutely. Uh, you know, I know not all of these groups are um, as active as others, um, but, you know, this group, even though it's called administrators, we want everybody here. We want everybody sharing their stories. Um, so don't run away. If you're not an administrator, you can still hang with us. All right, um, so next meeting for this group is June 18th. Um, and Dale, I, do we wanna tease any of that meeting yet or do we wanna keep it secret? 
Uh, yeah, we can tease it a little bit. Uh, Terry Miller from Des Moines. I believe he's 15, 16, 38, 35 times certified. I don't know. I lost count. I'm sure he's lost count too, but um, he's going to be doing a good um, all audience based uh, presentation. And then uh, Metazoa, if you were with us, oh geez, probably two years ago now, um, Metazoa has the, the snapshot tool that uh, it's like an IDE, but it's very DX uh, oriented. It's very dev friendly. It's very admin friendly. And then they have a, a couple of other um, admin facing tools as well. Metazoa will be sponsoring and presenting on uh, some of the new tools in their toolkit. So Terry Miller, Metazoa, June 18th, be there. Awesome. We'll yeah. The link out probably uh, early next week. Yeah. Uh, right, right after we put the video out of this call, right? So uh, that's perfect. Um, thank you, Dale. And uh, and one more one more opportunity here because I, I realized I asked if there was someone from the dev group, but I didn't ask for the other group. So thank you, Dale, for keeping me honest with these slides. Uh, anybody from the WIC group, the nonprofit group, uh, we've got a, a B2C and a B2B marketing group in town. Um, anybody want to talk about any other events coming up? I want to let people get off mute. Okay, okay. Um, all right, so moving on. Do we have any Salesforce employees on the call? Dale diligently sends out an invite for every one of these meetings <laughs> to all the local Salesforce employees to see if anyone will show up. Um, anybody here today wants to introduce themselves? Except there's a very real chance I might have forgotten to do that this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, Dale. <laughs> Oops. Uh, we're always trying to make sure that people, you know, get in touch, especially with local Salesforce resources. So um, if you uh, know a local Salesforce resource uh, that maybe we don't know about, let us know uh, so we can get them on our list um, and make sure that they can join if they want to join. A few more community resources and events that we want to cover. Um, MVP Office Hours. So this is the first and third Friday of every month at mvpofficehours.info. Um, the next call is tomorrow. Uh, so you can register at bit.ly slash mvpohus. Again, all caps with those bit.ly links, don't forget. Um, love MVP office hours. Um, thing I always wanna note about MVP office hours, it's not just for MVPs. <laughs> and uh, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to be an MVP to join. Um, it is an open office hours, it's collaborative. Sometimes the MVPs are answering the questions, sometimes they're asking the questions. Um, so if you wanna hang out, if you've got a problem, if you've got something that you need help with, um, it's a great open line, first and third Friday of every month. Uh, to get some assistance with the problem or, you know, just talk about some release or something else that's coming up. Um, but are, are great. Uh, Dale, who's on the MVP office hours with you tomorrow? So it's, so uh, Jared Kingston mm -hmm. after 170 something episodes has decided to step down and, and pursue oh. other MVP endeavors. So it's myself, it's Squire Kirshner in Milwaukee and Joy Shutters Helbing in Chicago. Uh, awesome. Three of us run it, and then we get a good 20, 25 people every call, and it's there's very rarely dead air. So, uh, it's <laughs> it's a good time. Awesome. I love it. Um, so Salesforce events, um, as you guys probably all heard by now, right? Salesforce has moved all of their events to virtual. Um, so if you haven't already explored uh, signing up for the virtual Trailhead X, I definitely recommend doing that. I, mean, I think that's going to be really interesting and exciting to see how, how they transform that event. Uh, into a, a virtual presence. Um, and that that also includes Dreamforce, uh, we're to understand. So um, that's gonna be interesting as well. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, the They are really pumping out the content. Um, Salesforce is, I think they're doing a good job of trying to keep us engaged. Um, so go to the Trailhead uh, calendar. Um, there's some awesome webinars coming up. Trailhead Live is so cool. I don't know if anyone has had a chance to engage in any of the Trailhead Live sessions, um, but really cool topics, um, some live coding sometimes. So definitely check out um, the Trailhead calendar for more information on what's coming up there. Um, and community events, um, this virtual dream thing is really interesting to me. So it's actually happening this weekend, uh, not during the week, um, but it is the, is it, am I right in saying, Dale, that's the first ever all virtual uh -huh. conference? Yeah. yeah so, they were, like, they planned to do it before the world said you have to do everything. <laughs> right. Virtual. Right. Um, I think last count a couple of weeks ago was they were up to 18,000 attendees with the goal of yep. potentially 15,000. Yep. So it's going to be a really, um, I don't know, it's going to be a really interesting and inspiring weekend. Um, there's a lot of really cool topics 
um, if you go check out the virtual dream and website, you'll see uh, some of the sessions out there. Um, so if you are just craving more Salesforce content, um, that is definitely something you want to check out this weekend. Um, Trailblazer mentorship. This is another thing. Um, again, another awesome thing coming out of the trailhead camp. Um, so I, I, I know I haven't done this yet, but Dale, I think you did. Uh, you signed up to be a mentor. Um, so yeah. if you are someone who wants to be a mentor, or if you are someone who, who wants a mentor, um, you can go to the link that's here on screen um, and you can apply to be part of that mentorship program. Um, and Salesforce Trailhead is going to connect you um, with either a mentee or a mentor, depending on your needs, um, so that you can connect and grow in the Salesforce ecosystem. And I think um, just to editorialize for a second, I think right now in particular um, is a really a really excellent time to get engaged, um, whether you're looking for a mentor or a mentee, um, you know, we all need a lot of support during this time. And um, I sound like all the commercials on TV, but I'm serious. Uh, you know, now is the time to really get engaged um, and give back if you're somebody who can be a mentor. Um, or, you know, we heard somebody at the very beginning of the call who was saying they're, they're just getting started on Trailhead, right? Um, we have time, we're at home, we have internet access. Uh, get engaged with a mentor and, and start hitting those trails. Um. Yeah, Please. I, I, will, I will just definitely say, uh, if, you, if you've talked to me for more than like three seconds, you know, I'm a huge believer in pay it forward. Uh, you don't have to have any community qualifications. You don't have to be an MVP. You don't have to be a user group leader. You don't have to oh. be any of the things except somebody who wants to give back if you want That's to. Right. And mentees, if you're looking for somebody, their rubric, their matching criteria, uh, from what I've heard, is pretty much spot on you will be matched with somebody who will be able to help you with where you are in your journey salesforce has done a phenomenal job of respecting that everybody is on their own journey and meeting them where they are with this program that's awesome feedback you you got matched what is it two months ago now a month ago i got matched back in january and oh gosh um, time flies yeah, God, no kidding. Uh, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm really happy to say that. Um, so as a BA, I, I got matched up with somebody who was applying to be an internal BA. She was uh, the customer service manager already service cloud certified. And she uh, applied and got the job as the internal BA on her IT side. Um, just That's being awesome. able to say, here's what I go through as a BA, frame up your story like this. Just, it, it's just a conversation. It doesn't have to be anything formal or rigid. It's like, just be there to help somebody. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks so much. A anybody, just out of curiosity, anybody out there uh, applied for the mentorship program on either side of the fence? I know uh, Jay Baker, I saw you just commented uh, that you have some colleagues on it. Anybody who's actually in the program other than Dale? Oh, and who wants to talk about it? I mean, don't feel compelled. I mean, I, I, have to give you program, the opportunity. I have my own program, but it's yeah. true. Thing. True. Yeah. Yeah. Why, it's why don't you throw that out? Actually, I'm serious. I'm dead serious. Yeah, please. Um, please, Shauna, go. No, I just, I, well, I can't take on anything else <laughs> at this point, but um, I, I think everyone in the ecosystem probably knows by now, you know, like the Pep Up Tech brand and, and what, you know, what that brand stands for and how we help people in the ecosystem. So, um, yeah, that's just... The only reason why I haven't signed up for it is because I'm still dealing with so many uh, mentees from that program. Of course. <laughs> you're, you're doing your thing awesomely. You're, yeah. If people, hey, Shauna, if people don't know about Pep Up Tech, where should they go to learn more information about it? You can go to pepuptech.org um, and you can find out more information there. There's a community group. Um, awesome. There's a Twitter page you can follow. Every, you know, everything you need to know is there. Awesome. Thanks, Dale. Dale just posted the link in the chat, so check it out. Uh, last but not least on this page um, is the idea exchange prioritization. So um, a couple, I don't know, a little while ago now, uh, we had the idea exchange team in town um, and they kind of talked us through what the new prioritization model was going to look like, uh, helped us kind of mock through uh, some prioritization. It was a great time. Um, and uh, we all got our coins to spend. So prioritization is live. Um, Go stay abreast of this, guys. This is really important, uh, guys and gals, uh, and not by any folks. Um, get myself in a corner there. So go to the prioritization page um, and make sure that you're on top of when the prioritization windows are opening. This is um, a really awesome opportunity for us to give feedback directly to the product managers and make sure that the stuff that we need uh, to get prioritized is, is getting into the next couple of cycles. So um, don't hesitate uh, to go make your voice heard, sign up for prioritization. Um, 
don't need to do anything special to do that. Uh, just log in like you normally would um, to the community and make it happen. Summer 20. Um, so uh, we won't spend a ton of time on this um, because I think we're probably all inundated with, <laughs> with these uh, notifications, but a couple of really important milestones to note. Um, Summer 20 got moved back. I'm sure we all got the emails. Um, and so uh, Dale's kind of outlined the new release windows. Release notes are live uh, now, the preview notes. Um, so definitely go check those out if you haven't already. We'll probably spend some time at the end um, after our lovely guests have had a chance to present uh, talking about Summer 20 because I love talking about new releases and new stuff. Um, so if you don't know your release date yet, go, go check it out. Go to status.salesforce.com and make sure that you get your release window and understand when that is so you can be release ready. Um, they always do a great uh, job of release readiness webinars too. Um, so they're targeting June 5th through 11th. Just stay on top of the salesforce.com slash live page or uh, Salesforce Live has a Twitter feed as well that I recommend as a follow to get notified um, for new events uh, that are coming up. The certification maintenance exams were also impacted by COVID. So um, uh, we all, again, probably saw the emails. Um, they made some changes um, and didn't require some of the maintenance uh, for a certain period of time. Um, but Dale's helpfully provided a link here um, for all of the details that you need to know about which ones you didn't have to do, although of course you should do anyway, um, and which ones you do have to do. Um, so uh, be sure to check that link. Um, and Dale, I don't know if you have that link handy, but you want to toss that in the chat if you have it available, uh, that would be great. Yeah, I can. Um, awesome, thanks. Uh, so definitely uh, make sure that you understand what those requirements are. We don't want anybody losing those hard earned certs. Um, and finally, uh, go ahead and check out the Release Readiness Trailblazers uh, community group, the success group, um, and they'll help you stay on top of all of this stuff. Uh, you know, obviously we, we do our best to bring that content to you here at these meetings, um, but go sign up for that group, set your email settings to Daily Digest so you don't get bombarded, um, and make sure that you understand exactly what's going on uh, with all the new release stuff going on. That's also a great way to know about um, prioritization when it goes live. Well, and I also suggest uh, setting it to daily because y'all know this is my biggest pet peeve. Weekly as the default is the dumbest setting in the history <laughs> of settings. So just change it to daily and you'll be fine. Yeah, Random. Really great. This is my favorite slide, guys. It's all of our favorite slides. So um, we want to know all the cool stuff. Um, I already know there's at least one first time attendee. Uh, so if you're a first time attendee, uh, give us a wave, sign off in the chat. Oh, man, we want to we want to see you. We want to recognize you. Um, and we're especially interested in folks um, who recently landed a new gig, who might know about a job opening that they have. Let's start with new gigs. Um, so who got a new job out there that they're celebrate that they're celebrating? And they want to tell us about. And you can unmute. Yeah, you can unmute. Talk it. We, we want to see it. We want to hear you. I got a new gig. Sweet. Tell us about it. It's just a six-week contract while I'm on furlough. But uh, the good people at Cloud One decided to throw me into their mix and let me be an admin for a while. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Very nice, Daniel. Very, Very nice. That's great. I'm, I'm a consultant now. <laughs> Ooh, look at you. Uh, uh, the big yeah, so also, also, uh, oh, I guess now that I have the room, I guess I should say, uh, I said I had five certs. I have four. I failed one and slept through one. <laughs> so, so those are two uh, uh, X's next to my name for my <laughs> cloud. So, so it's four, but I'm working on that fifth one. I'll get it soon. That's awesome. Uh, slept through it. <laughs> yeah. Cole, you want to talk about your new game? Sure. Yeah, I'm Cole Erickson. Um, I started a part-time part role in addition to uh, my full-time where I'm just helping uh, a local Kansas City software company with their sales and marketing. So I'm mainly on the marketing side of the house, but I do touch Salesforce, mostly on the campaign object and reports. Awesome. That's like its own beast right there. So awesome. Oh, yeah. One of my colleagues is on here too. Good to see you, Matt. <laughs> Love it. Um, anyone else want to share? I didn't see anything else pop up in the chat, but now's the time. I failed PD1. Boom. <laughs> Solid. I think everyone's failed PD1 at one point. That's a rough one. Especially the new one I've heard is pretty challenging. Um, the new version. So mm -hmm. lucky you. 
Um, well, let's, hey, studying for platform builder, love it. Excellent. Love to see those certification studies. Um, I, I don't know if folks saw, uh, but in our community group, um, there was a post about the, the platform app builder study group. So um, that's, that's getting started. So don't, uh, you know, don't wait, get sign up for that. If you didn't already miss the window, I don't think you did. Um, but check it out in the community group. I um, don't yeah, mind feeling my first time through. Cause then I know what to expect the next time. Right? Through. Like I honestly, I'm like, yep, failed, doing it again. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, it's when we're meeting in, in site or on site and, and somebody fails, it's the loudest applause you're going to hear <laughs> because I mean, we celebrate it. It's an opportunity for us to come together, potentially help somebody and yeah. meet somebody who's past it or whatever. It's, it, it's all helpful. Yeah. Especially now when they give you such great insight into what parts you missed, right? Like that didn't used to be the case. Like back in the day, you took those things and you were like, well, I guess I just got to try again. Uh, but now at least they tell you like really specifically the parts that you need to study, which I love. Right. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, job openings, right? Um, we all know about the job and unemployment situation in town. So, uh, and just nationally and globally. Um, but if there are job openings that people want to talk about, um, obviously you have a very captive audience of folks who'd love to hear about them. I'm gonna start, um, it's not posted yet. I really wanted to get it posted by today, um, but I am gonna be in the market for a new Salesforce admin yeah, one yeah, over here awesome. at Academy Bank. Um, same oh, somebody watch out, gotta mute your line there. Um, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in the market for a new Salesforce admin one. I'll post it in the community when the, the post is up uh, on academybank.com. I'm looking to build out my team, um, finally getting to hire somebody over here uh, to help me out, which is awesome, because I need it. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Anybody else have any job openings to share? Opportunities they know about? So I don't see Brent Wineland on the call, but he posted in the success group that NetSmart is looking Great. for a position. And of course it's, you know, when, when you want the information right now, it's when your internet goes slow and won't pull it up. But um, <laughs> of course, uh, you can go to the Kansas City success group and he posted, I think yesterday. Awesome. If Thanks, anybody's Dale. wanting to relocate to the Bay Area anytime soon, we are going to be looking for Salesforce specific SEs and uh, a developer. So nice. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. All righty, y'all. Um, we could stay on this slide forever, but we have to move on. Um, oh, hey, look, it's the Salesforce Platform App Builder study group um, that I should have known was coming up. Um, so, yeah, check it out. Set to begin May 28th, so you still have time. Runs for 12 to 13 weeks. Um, they posted the link in the community group, uh, but it's also here. So I'll let it breathe on the screen for a second. If you really want to try to type out that really long URL, which I don't know why you would, just go to the community group, get the link, and we'll make it happen. Well, and again, we're going to PDF the deck after, so you'll have access oh, yeah. to the links. There you go. Awesome. Moving right along. Certification days. I know we're all excited about certification days. There's more, uh, more, more, more. Um, and they're coming up um, soon. There's a little calendar here um, of those webinars. Um, so uh, there will be links within the deck so you can sign up. Um, strongly encourage folks uh, to check that out if you are, like, all, like many of us, uh, trying to take advantage of this time um, at home to focus up and study and, and add a few more certs uh, to your belt. So check that out. Um, I think they're really cool. Daniel, you did two of those, right? I think you talked about that last time. Maybe I'm mistaken. But yes, I, feel like I, you, I definitely endorse these. In fact, I was doing one that was based in uh, UK and it ended up finishing early. So I closed my eyes for a bit because I had my test scheduled right afterwards. And I closed my eyes for a bit too long, but uh, the, <laughs> so you can <laughs> you can uh, refresh what it, it preps you for the test. You get a a, vo a voucher for a hundred dollars off. Um, then you get three of those, which is going to come in handy now. Um, yeah. And because once you take it the second time, it's half price, so it's like it's free the second. You know. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. these are these are great uh, learning tools. They don't every every. Uh, Everyone has their own style. They're not all the same. And, and I've noticed now that uh, I, I, I praised them for their prep on and how they do it. And then I found that this other person that I just attended, they don't do it like everybody else. So yeah, I guess it's hit and miss on, on how much uh, uh, 
prep you get for the test versus how much general knowledge for the test. I, I don't know. Some people prepare you to pass the test. Right, Some people right. Prepare you for all the knowledge you should know. So it's it's hit or miss. Yeah, but I definitely agree. Those are great, great resources. And who doesn't love discount codes, right? Like you said, it you know it's free the second time. So it's awesome. Thanks for sharing, Daniel. Alrighty, finally, I'm gonna get quiet and let the cool people who are on this call <laughs> uh, be here um, and, and take over. Um, so we've got a really exciting agenda today. We've got Sean Hughes from Get Feedback. Uh, she's gonna be talking about modernizing your business operations with surveys. Um, I think we all know who Get Feedback is, so it'll be exciting um, to see uh, how she puts it to use. And then we've got uh, David, David from Brainiate, um, from Brainiate, is Brainiate, um, and he's gonna talk about how to keep your sanity as a remote Salesforce admin in this time. Um, I think there couldn't be a more relevant discussion topic uh, for right now than what David's going to talk about. Uh, and then like I alluded to earlier, um, at the end of these awesome sessions, uh, we have a little time left over. Um, we do have a hard stop at two, um, but we'll still have some time. Um, and so uh, we'll do some Q&A. Maybe we'll talk some more summer if people want to talk about some of the cool stuff uh, or really just whatever folks want to cover. Um, we'll have a little of extra office hours available at the end. Um, so without further ado, Shauna, I'd love to turn this over to you. Yeah. Easier for me to stop sharing or can you steal the sharing from me? Let's see. I think you need to stop and then she yeah, can take you need it. To stop. Perfect. I am stopping now. It's all you. Can you see my screen? We sure can. Help. Awesome. Awesome. So just in case you were wondering what we're going to be talking about today, it's modernizing your business operations with surveys for Salesforce, not to be confused with Salesforce surveys, because um, I know there's a lot of chatter about that, um, but it is surveys for Salesforce. So my name is Shauna Hughes, as mentioned before, I am Get Feedback's Global Product Growth and Innovation Evangelist. I'm also a Salesforce MVP. And what I really love about my job is I get to work with Salesforce customers every day on how they can improve their relationships with their customers through customer feedback programs or you know holistic CX programs, whatever you wanna call it. And what we've learned at Get Feedback is that surveys can be so valuable when integrated with the Salesforce platform, of course. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how you can leverage surveys to improve how your Salesforce org works and users make how users can make smarter decisions, right? So to kick it off with some context, Get Feedback is known for being a customer feedback solution for Salesforce, as we all know. We help our customers bring the voice of their customers into Salesforce so they can take action on critical feedback and fuel retention and growth. Now, but surveys can be leveraged for more than just feedback. We see our customers using our surveys in really creative ways due to the nature of how surveys can integrate with Salesforce. Surveys can be forms to input data or update information. A lot of people don't think about it that way, but they can. Um, they can then be mapped into Salesforce, you know, as custom objects or field data. Once the data is in Salesforce, this is where the magic happens. You can trigger business processes and leverage analytics to work faster and smarter. Now, in this session, I'm gonna take you through three different ways to leverage integrated surveys uh, to help modernize your business operations. So optimizing business process like lead qualification with survey data is number one. Number two is improving data hygiene by mapping survey responses to key fields in Salesforce. And three is fueling Einstein, which a lot of people again don't realize. So fueling your AI um, features with more data to make those features even smarter. Okay, now in the first use case, we can leverage surveys as forms throughout the Salesforce Lightning user, user experience to help your teams input data from customers, you know, just more efficiently. To embed surveys into the user experience, you can easily download our flow template from the App Exchange and launch surveys instantly from custom buttons or even embed them in existing flow 
or business processes you've already created. Um, so just so you know, we do have a, a flow template that's on the App Exchange that you can go ahead and download. Um, of course, if you ever ha already have a Get Feedback account, that um, that template is free for you. A, free, a few examples of ways we see customers using surveys like this during the lead qualification process is um, on-site field sales audits and understanding preferences for in-store products rec or recommendations. Wow, I can't speak today. Um, using clicks instead of keystrokes, you can reduce input error and garner higher quality data that improves business outcomes. So we know if we if you're giving them kind of like the flow, the walk through the information, and they're not having to type that information in by themselves, it's going to reduce those data errors um, and make your life as an admin or a developer or BA a lot easier because then you're you're spending less time on you know data um, data quality or data health. The second use case is around improving data hygiene. So that was a good segue. <laughs> Using data from Salesforce to enhance customer records. Where, wherever you're getting your feedback from a customer, take this opportunity to weave a pref, you know, to weave your preferences or progressive profiling questions into the survey to update customer profiles and fill in gaps in your account data. For example, if you send an NPS survey, NPS means net promoter score, ask to confirm their location so then that you can enhance your demographic data or add questions which makes your products and services more relevant to your customer's experience, right? So fueling customer data with preference information helps your team market, sell, and support customers better with a more holistic view of your customer. So we all know that we don't want to be marketed to with things that don't, you know, matter to us. One of my biggest pet peeves, and I think anyone in the Salesforce, you know, community can really relate to this, is I hate Mason Frank. I hate them as a recruiter. Okay. They don't know what it is that I do. And they're constantly emailing me, calling me about opportunities that do not fit my profile. And I have no respect for an organization that says that they're compatible or they know Salesforce or they're Salesforce experts. And you can't even keep my record in your database up to date. So sorry, just went on a little rant there. Praise, <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So number uh, three is getting your customer feedback into Salesforce does more than just help you measure and improve past experiences. It creates better future experiences for your customers as well. Einstein is Salesforce's artificial intelligence offering, as we all know. It makes things like intelligent case routing and assignment decisions based on all of your customers' data in Salesforce. So by giving Einstein visibility into metrics like customer satisfaction and agent performance, Get Feedback makes Einstein's predictive functionality even smarter. For example, Einstein can move an unhappy VIP customer. So if you have leveling set or however you have that uh, enabled in your org, um, you know, if, they, if the VIP customer is unhappy, you can put that customer to the top of your support queue. And an agent who always gets a perfect CSAT score for a particular topic can get those future cases routed to him or her automatically. So ensuring that your VIP customers is getting your best service possible and then helping with that retention. Okay, and now it's demo time. So I'm going to switch my screen share. And while I'm doing this, if there's any questions, um, go ahead and blurt them out. <laughs> all right, can you all see my screen still? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you're seeing the Get Feedback suite here? Yes. Okay, perfect. Just wanna make sure I did that right. All right, so Get Feedback um, is a very user-friendly tool. Um, I don't say that just because I work for them. 
Um, I say that because I was a user before I worked for them um, and also a Salesforce MVP. And I take, you know, what I say, my integrity very uh, seriously. Um, so I'm not saying this just to get you interested in our product. I would never do that. Um, I'm saying that this is one of the best surveying tools on the market for particular use cases. Um, so when you build out a survey and get feedback, it's super simple. When you log in, you're presented with options that's going to allow you to really make that survey your own and build brand recognition for your organization. So when we're talking about, you know, making sure that the survey is visually appealing and people want to take it, um, making sure that it fits your brand is important. So we give you as um, an organization, we give you images, textures, colors, um, you know, uh, basically a library of things that you can utilize to build out your survey. Now, these are not required for you to use. These just gives you an idea of how you can, you know, really help it advance your surveys for your customers. However, if you wanted to really match your brand, you're going to upload a background image that suits your brand, um, your brand visually. So you're going to make sure you're speaking with your marketing team or whoever that is that you know, create your brand, making sure that it suits um, or it mimics your brand experience. And that is all the way down to the font that you use and making sure that the color of the text and the button colors match everything. And you can definitely do that within our platform. When it comes to adding questions, it's super simple. Um, if you ever built out a PowerPoint template or a Google slide deck, uh, you can do this. It's, it's, it's easy. So you can see I've added a few questions here on the um, left hand side. If you just select add question, you're going to choose from a number of our pre built question types. And you can see that there's different types of questions that you can embed. Um, there's some CX questions that we have available, some basic questions. And we also uh, give you if you're if you're get feedback accounts is integrated with Salesforce, we actually give you some pre-designed uh, and connected um, forms that you can actually build out um, within the Get Feedback platform as well. So let's say I selected, you know, this question, all I have to do is type in line and it's going to save that information. That's it. That's all you have to do to create a question. Now, we all know that there's more to it that we um, want to do. If you've ever been to a Salesforce event, um, if you've ever been to Dreamforce, and you, the surveys that you get after that event and after a session that you attend at Dreamforce um, is actually a good feedback survey. Most people don't know that because it's white labeled to Salesforce, of course. <laughs> um, they don't want anybody knowing that they're using anyone else's platform, but you'll see clouds here instead of thumbs up, thumbs down, or, you know, like a smiley face, they use their signature clouds um, to, you know, do ratings and, and things like that. So you can customize it, like I said, to your heart's content. I'm going to go ahead and delete that question because I don't want that in our survey. But I am going to talk a little bit about how you can utilize our um, logic. So within our forms, you can do, you can utilize skip logic. Um, if you're familiar with if then statements, of course, you're going to be familiar with how logic is created within a survey. So if I answer yes to this question, take me to this question, it's just those traditional skip logic or if then statements. Okay. And within this survey, I have built out some logic because what this allows me to do is personalize my survey to my customers that's taking the survey. Not only does it give them the um, opportunity to really um, dig into what their issue is, but it saves them time. They're not going through questions that aren't relevant to what you're asking them. Okay. So let's go ahead and exit that logic builder. As you can see here, we have some um, input uh, or what we call merge fields. Um, so this information is going to come directly from your Salesforce instance. So any, any data that's within Salesforce and you have get feedback connected to Salesforce, you can pull that data into your survey. So for this example, it's going to list my case owner's name for this particular um, survey that I've done. Again, I've, um, I can also do some, um, sorry, 
uh, question. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the name of this feature now. Um, question mapping. I know that's not the name. I don't have to. I'm gonna have to think through that. For some reason, I can't think of it right now. Um, but anyway, I'll explain to you what the feature does. So the feature, what this feature does is it allows you to map in your previous question answer to your secondary question. Sorry, go ahead. Is it conditional questions? Is that the term? No, that's not, that's not what we call it, but that's probably why I can't think of it because we call it something completely different. <laughs> but it's the same concept. Um, so essentially you're, you're, you're allowing your customers to remember essentially how they answered the previous question. Again, further personalizing it to really make it seem like you are knowing, you know your customer and you understand kind of like where they're coming from. Um, answer piping, it, it, it kicked in. <laughs> So the feature is called answer piping. So you're piping the previous answer into your next question, okay? Any questions on um, these features that are within the survey? Again, like I said, super simple. If you understand logic, skip logic and how to build that, um, you know, it's super simple to pull in data from your Salesforce org, um, no, uh, you know, no tricks up our sleeve there. No questions? Okay, Dale, I can't see the chat. So if anyone's asking questions in the chat, I don't, um, don't know. No, no questions, questions, but we've had a comment that they love the UX. Oh, yes. <laughs> awesome. So when it comes to survey distribution, we take an omni-channel approach. So you can send out or you can distribute your survey on any channel. Um, and when you take a look at our distribution op options, you can send it out via link. There's multiple different email send options. Um, and we have a custom uh, integration with Pardot as well. You can send it out via SMS, web overlay, web embed, Salesforce chat. So essentially you're embedding the survey into the Salesforce chat window. So when the chat ends, you get in context survey information from your customers. Um, you can embed it in a Salesforce community. Some of the use cases that you'll see in a community is like if you have knowledge articles or help articles and it says, is this article helpful? You get the thumbs up, thumbs down, or even with product feedback, you can embed surveys in your communities as well. And then with the mobile app embed, again, um, product feedback, um, feature feedback, or just feedback in general for the products and services that you offer. With our... Um, demo today i'm going to be sending the survey from salesforce um, and that option essentially allows me to create a one-touch email um, where you can see this email template here i can embed the very first survey question within the email template or whatever the most um, relevant survey question is into that email template these are some of the merge fields that i utilize now as you all can probably tell this is a uh, visual force email template most people are like I don't write visual force why would I do that we don't actually <laughs> expect you to or require you to once you build out your survey adding your questions all you have to do is select export you're gonna come here copy all of the visual force code here close that you're gonna hop into your Salesforce classic email templates because for some reason lightning email templates don't work with um, Anyway, I'm not even gonna go there. Uh, <laughs> so right now, you're gonna hop into your classic email templates. Um, you're gonna paste that code and you're just gonna hit save. And then you can see, you can see here that it's gonna create that one touch email. Now, if you know anything about process builder, um, you can create a simple standard case, closed case, um, you know, process that when that case is closed is going to send out that email template. Obviously, you have to create an email alert for your process builder to work, right? And I think that's simple enough for everyone to understand. Um, but this is a simple case closed, you know, pulling from the case object. Once the case is closed, I'm going to send that email. So let's hop into a case. This is what um, I built out a case. My customers called in and I've added some custom fields to my case object. Now, 
you can choose to map your data anywhere in Salesforce. Any standard or custom object, you can map your data from within Get Feedback. It doesn't have to be um, to a feedback object. It's map it on any custom or standard object. This use case have my case data mapped to my um, case object. I'm also um, adding some um, ac activities. Um, if I have a low CSET score, I can create an activity as well. Um, I also map some of this data back to my contact object as well. So multiple mappings from one response, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this case. And then I am going to hop into my user's inbox. And you can see that pop right in there. And this is that one touch. Okay. I'm just going to say um, actually unsatisfied here so you can kind of see um, that task creation and you can kind of see that logic is all walking me through. Um, because if you remember, back in uh, the survey build, um, I have logic here that for that first question, depending on how they answer, they get the we're sorry or they get the good to hear, right? If they gave a good uh, response. So I'm just gonna say, um, you know, I'm not friendly. <laughs> and then I want, I'm gonna answer like what products or services this is actually a cool feature set that I really like because a lot of people are like, well, I don't know what that product is called. Being able to visually represent your products and or services helps individuals really track on what they, you know, what, what they like and what they don't like. Okay. So I'm just going to say chip reader here and I'm going to say something like that. Right. <laughs> so then I'm going to hit submit. And that free text field, we also have text analytics that if you are accepting free text, text analytics will help you to define how, you know, customers are really feeling about your products and services as well. And once we end, we end on this custom landing page. Um, and this is essentially just a page to promote more products and services. You can redirect to another page or you can embed a video in here. One of the really cool use cases are uh, one of our customers do uh, Sunbasket if they're a food delivery platform, so if their customers are unhappy with their service, on this uh, landing page, they actually give them a 10% discount on their next order. Um, so that's a way to really show uh, surprise and delight and also um, you know, hone in on retention for those customers that are unhappy. So I'm gonna hop back into my case, and as you know, we have to hit refresh to update the information. Do, do. Lightning fast. <laughs> you said it, not me. Right, right. <laughs> so you can see here that the um, that the information from the CSAT score um, was a two. I was upset about the angel, agent friendliness, the chip reader, um, and then I said I was I was also irritating. Um, and then for the low CSAT score. It should have created a task, and I'm not seeing that task actually created, so there must be something wrong on my end, or it's still working through that process, which actually could be the case, um, just because my system seems to be going extremely slow. Uh, can you all still hear me? Yes, yes we can. Yeah, we got you. Okay, awesome. <laughs> my On my end for, um, uh, Zoom, I have a exclamation part by my uh, exclamation icon by my audio. So, um, so anyway, I'll figure that out. But that's, um, as you know, that's something uh, that can happen. You can create multiple tasks and and things within your org or even new records. Um, when it comes to uh, you know reporting and creating dashboards, we all know that you can report out using Salesforce, combining your survey data with your customer data and making it more uh, relevant and, and you know proving that ROI for your leadership. 
but get feedback also offers a um, dashboard uh, feature set that actually allows you to really combine all of your survey um, you know MPS score CSAT score um, and additionally as I was saying within that open text field um, really tracking on positive and negative sentiment by identifying keywords and phrases within those surveys that you are sending out as well okay that is the end of my uh, demo. I'm going to hop back over to my slides because I have um, something cool to share with you all. Uh, can you see the slide now? Yes. Demo time, yes. Awesome. I'm so, <laughs> so happy this is working. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so now here's some time to um, collect your feedback on the session and how I did. Um, and it wouldn't be a get feedback presentation without actually um, encouraging you guys to take a survey. <laughs> so we'd love to hear your feedback about this session. Um, all you have to do is open your browser and type in, you know, um, bit.ly and the um, forward slash. KCUG 2020. Okay, now once you do that, your email is not required, but recommended. Um, we will be giving away $200 gift cards to Amazon. And it's going to be so your names are going to be put through a randomizer. Um, and then you'll be able to get um, get put into the drawing with this. So without your email address, uh, just FYI, I can't send you the Amazon gift card. <laughs> so a little tricky, sneaky tactic, but if you opt in, that's your preference. All right. And that's it for me. Awesome. Sean, thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, Dale, just put the link in the chat for everybody. So if you haven't seen that yet, folks, uh, go to the chat and uh, grab that link and make sure you fill out that survey. Um, I... How many, is it a long survey, Sean? No, no, not at all. Excellent. I don't, I don't want everyone to be taking the survey while David's uh, giving his intro, but uh, so we'll give everyone a chance to. <laughs> well, and, and while they're doing that, does anybody have any questions for, yeah. for Shauna? Yeah. Oh, Matt's done already. There you go. You got one, Shauna. <laughs> No questions on that awesome demo? I mean, it's just so user-friendly that there's no questions. Yeah, exactly. I like to tell myself that all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, awesome yeah. presentation, awesome product. Anybody who's received uh, a Get Feedback survey knows how easy it is on the end user perspective, um, but to see just how easy it is on the setup side as well, mm -hmm. um, it's it is an all encompassing product. It's easy end to end. So mm -hmm. brilliant. Thank you. And pep up tech, go look into yeah. pep up tech, everybody. <laughs> yes, always. <laughs> you guys ready for me? I think we are. Yes, I think so. I wanted to, I want to give everyone two seconds to, to finish that survey, but let's do it. Um, so, uh, David, I, I think, you are able to share your screen now. Yeah, I'm uh, able to. Share. Nobody else is. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, welcome, David Gillard, to tell us all how we're supposed to keep sane during these crazy times. Thank you guys for having me. For those of you who are not familiar uh, with, with me, my name is David Giller. I'm a Salesforce implementation partner based out of the New York City area. I'm also uh, a Salesforce user group leader for the Northern New Jersey user group. Technically, I live in northern New Jersey, about 20 minutes away from New York City. <laughs> so what uh, we're going to be talking about now, what I'm going to be talking about today is um, how to go about working some best practices about working remotely as a Salesforce admin during COVID-19. As we all know, the world we are living in today, I, I say this all the time, it's like twilight zone. It's like the rules keep changing, the things that we took for granted before, whether it was toilet paper or just going for a walk or hanging out with someone, going, grabbing a slice of pizza, getting a coffee at Starbucks is all complicated now. And some of us, myself included, some of us are very familiar with what it's like to work remotely. 
But for me, for example, I've been working remotely for a very long time, but I was never, up until coronavirus, I was never working remotely with the rest of my family being in the house also at the same time, including my wife, who, by the way, is a kindergarten teacher who's teaching her kindergarten class through Zoom. I've got one daughter who's a college student who's also doing remote learning through Zoom. I've got uh, a, my youngest daughter is a high school sophomore also doing learning through Zoom. There's a dog. And then did I mention my married daughter, my oldest daughter, who's um, temporarily moved in with us with her husband who's in law school doing remote law school learning. All of us are in the same house. And that adds so many challenges to an already complex environment. So there is a lot of stress. There are a lot of nuances that uh, new factors that uh, many of us have never dealt with before that come into play when we're now talking about working remotely, uh, working remotely when, you know, during this whole coronavirus experience. So I'm going to share with you some of my uh, best practices and tips. Also, really just the main topics that at the very least we should all be aware of. And to Dale's comment, um, it's only about a month or two ago when this whole coronavirus thing started that I actually connected my computer through an ethernet port. I was never before relying on a wired connection to the internet. But now that everyone else is using, and by the way, when they're not in school, they're doing Netflix and, and YouTube and God knows what. Um, so yeah, this is the first time that I'm actually using a wired connection to the internet because heck, no one's taking away my internet here. I gotta freaking work. Anyway. Uh, so let's move on along. And um, what we've got over here is the first topic that we're going to talk about is mental health. Because let's face it, when it comes down to everything else, this is probably the most important thing that, that we really need to be uh, mindful of at the very least. So during the course of any day, I know, speaking for myself, I will go through a roller coaster of emotions of, okay, I got this day under control. You know, I'm not, I'm not too overwhelmed. I don't have too many things on my calendar. I can make progress on my to-do list. And then aside from the stuff that we can expect from work of an unexpected email, a phone call, a crisis that's going on with a particular client with their Salesforce configuration. So, okay, let's put that aside because we're all pretty much used to that. There are all of the other elements associated with being remote, all of the other elements of working through this coronavirus experience where all of a sudden you yourself might, be, might become sick or you think you coughed a little bit, you heard someone else in the house cough and suddenly you are stressed, panicked. You, got, you haven't heard from your elderly relative in a while and now you're stressed, panicked about them and all of the nuances about that. You heard the latest in the news, which by the way, I have personally found to be the worst thing that I could possibly do for my own mental health, watching the news anytime, not to get political, but anytime there's a, 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 a press release from the White House, like my stress level goes through the roof for sure. And that actually has a dramatic impact on my ability to get through the rest of the day, to focus on what I really need to focus on. So be mindful at least of what is going on for you from a mental health perspective. I personally have found and what I'm about to say is really not rocket science. You're all familiar with it, but just be aware of it that sometimes you just need to take a break of, from your settings. You just need to um, take a break from the news from maybe it's social media, like whatever it is. I'm actually really grateful that I have a dog because what I find is that the best thing I could do is just grab the leash. I don't care if the dog needs to want to go for a walk or not. I'm taking that dog around the block just for myself to get a little bit of fresh air, to get a little bit of a change of pace and to allow me to sort of recalibrate myself before going back to my desk and trying to get through the rest of my day, to, get, to, to try to get through the rest of my to-do list, to try to deal, to figure out how I'm gonna deal with maybe the drama that's going on in the rest of the house that I really can't ignore for too long. So there's a lot going on from a mental health perspective, and I'm not at all saying, oh, you know, grab the bottle of pills or, you know, reach for a therapist. I mean, those are, might be good advice too. But what I'm saying is there are a lot of things that we could do for ourselves, including, I actually, we were chatting a little bit uh, before we officially kicked off the call, I, I just uh, two weeks ago implemented for myself I uh, just a regular routine of actually working out at home. And that helps dramatically with the stress. 
Um, so there's a lot of things, and by the way, not to state the obvious, but getting a good night's sleep, eating healthy foods instead of just bombarding your body with junk foods. There's a lot of things that we can do, all the kinds of stuff that our grandmothers would uh, give us advice to do. Um, listen to that grandmotherly advice, and that will, that will get you very far through these crazy times because they are absolutely crazy times. Next, interaction with others at work. So some of you, especially as Salesforce admins, many of us, because hey, we're working with a cloud-based tool, many of us on a regular basis, we, we might be comfortable with working remote, even if on a regular basis, we're go we prior to coronavirus, we were going into the office. On those days where we can work remote, whether it's a snow day or it's a regular one day a week or whatever it is, we're comfortable with working remote. But a lot of times, the rest of the organization is not comfortable with working remote. And it becomes a real challenge when you are struggling to communicate with others from work when they are not sitting across the table from you, when they insist that when they're on a Zoom meeting, they are not opening their camera. So you don't have the facial expressions and the body language to a little bit that you can simulate it uh, visually. You don't have those additional elements that take the communication very far. You don't have those uh, as, as part of uh, the regular interaction with some of your colleagues. That could be incredibly stressful. So my advice to you is just be open and honest, be a little bit transparent. Turn to that colleague who refuses to turn the camera on and ask them, could you do me a favor? Can you turn the camera on? Because I'm sorry, I feel like I'm talking to a doorknob right now. And eventually they will. They'll, most of the time, when people are not turning the camera on, it's, there's a couple of different things that might be going on. One, let's face it, there might be a whole lot of clutter. They're not too proud of what's going on in their, the setting of their room. They might not be too proud of the fact that they're working in the basement and it's completely unfinished and it's really ugly and disgusting. Um, so they're, they're afraid to do that. You could also give them some advice and just basically tell them, look, just back yourself up against the wall. I don't really give a damn what you have going on in the room. And I don't really give a damn if you didn't do your hair and makeup. I don't care if you're only wearing a t-shirt or a hoodie. Um, just open the damn camera. And a lot of times things like that will help. Over communicating with your colleagues during times like this, over communicating, whether it's through Zoom, whether it's through email, whether it's through uh, Slack or any other method, is the best thing that you can do in order to keep folks on the same page. I can tell you that with my team, so my consulting firm, it's myself, and I also have a few people who report into me, um, we're often communicating aside from Zoom meetings and aside from email, we're also using Slack and sometimes we're simply text messaging each other, regular plain old text messaging. What, and sometimes it's just a regular phone call. Whatever works, who cares? We're all connected from a technology perspective, but make sure to try to keep those lines of communication open, whether it's things that are worth celebrating, whether it's things that where you have to manage others, other people who report into you, uh, whether it's managing your internal customers that you need to follow up with. Hey, did you, did you check out those new features that I released to you and I told you about? I haven't heard anything from you. So, so keep those lines of communication open. And if that means sometimes that you have to be a little bit of an egg to get that feedback, go ahead and be an egg. So what? Big deal. Uh, it, it, that will go back to helping your own mental health, which was the first topic we talked about. All right, so let's be mindful of interaction with others at work. The flip side of that is interaction with others at home because that could be really distracting. Now, I'm grateful that my my youngest is 16 years old and that I'm not dealing with toddlers right now uh, who I like, I don't need to start teaching them spelling or reading or preparing meals for them. My youngest, she wants a, she wants something to eat, go down to the kitchen, figure out yourself. And while you're at it, make something for me too. But at the same time, there are a lot of people who are dealing with a lot of drama going on at home. It could be, it could be newborns. It could be little uh, toddlers. It could be the dog that keeps barking. Um, it could be the spouse or other relatives who happen to be in the house. And you're constantly telling each other, shut up. I'm in a meeting right now. 
that's okay. You have to do it, but it is stressful. Lay, but lay down the groundwork. Sometimes you can use something as simple as keeping your door closed and having something hanging on the door to let them know that you're in a meeting. I could tell you that what I do with my family, we have, uh, we use WhatsApp. So we have a WhatsApp group. If you're not familiar with WhatsApp, it's basically like a text messaging app. Um, so we have WhatsApp group. And if let's say like, even if it were right now and someone in the family didn't necessarily realize and they turning on, they, they're blasting the music really loud or um, my two daughters might be fighting with each other or something like that. I will text message in the group. I will just open it up on, on the desktop computer. I don't even have to pull out my phone. I'll, I'll open it up on my computer and I'm going to send a message in the WhatsApp group. Shut the hell up. Everyone can hear you because I'm in a meeting. Camera's open, mic's open right now. So you need to have that same level of transparency and to the extent possible, the level of understanding a meeting of the minds with those with whom you are living to have them understand the appropriate boundaries of what you have to do in order to get through the workday and again, to keep your own sanity. So, and by the way, I didn't mean to ignore, uh, like interacting with others, a lot of times that means chores of some kind. It could be laundry, it could be taking out the trash, it could be getting groceries, it could be preparing dinner. There's a lot that's going on there as well. And again, setting the appropriate boundaries that at least everyone knows, listen, I'm not doing any of that until 4.30, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, whatever it is. Next, hardware software. Hopefully by now, Having, most of us have been doing this remote working, you know, stay in place experience for one or two or three months. Hopefully by now you've addressed any hardware or software issues. Now the hardware and software issues, some people, they don't want to complain. They know things are really difficult at work right now. So they don't want to be the one, the noisy one, but I'm sorry if you're, version of Excel or Word or Outlook or your computer itself is not compatible with what you need to do and you're working, you're, you're using all kinds of workarounds just to get your work done, speak up at work and call it out. And if they say, sorry, we can't do it. Okay, fine. But at least you brought it up. At least let your coworkers, let your manager know that you're having issues because the hardware or software that you were provided with from work is not enough for you to get your job done. Address it. Don't just let it simmer. Don't let that be another point of frustration that is building up internally within you. Get it out. Let it out there. Again, what's the worst thing they're going to say? They're going to say, no, no, sorry. I can't do anything about it. Okay. But at least you tried. All right. Physical setup. So what are we talking about now? We're talking about the actual logistics that you have. So let's make believe you've taken care of everything else, right? You've taken care of uh, meaning of the minds with everyone in, in your household. And, uh, you know, you're working on the getting the times of fresh air and exercise and eating healthy. And there are a lot of issues that you need to think about as it relates to your physical setup. Some people are working from the kitchen or dining room table. Some people are working from their bedroom. Some people are working, like I mentioned before, uh, their unfinished basement. By the way, I'm just going to deviate real quick. I have actually a really, really funny story on this because I've experienced this myself. So um, this goes a couple of years back. And uh, my sister, my older sister was actually very sick. She had breast cancer and she moved in with us. That's not the funny part, but this is, that's the background of what, of what happened. So my, um, my older sister moved in with us. She actually did hospice before she passed away. Uh, she moved in with us. We did not have where to turn into, to give her a bedroom. So basically I took my office, at the time my office was on the first floor of the home, and basically we converted my office into a bedroom for her. And and where the heck was I supposed to work? I ended up going to my unfinished basement. When I say unfinished, we're talking no heat, no air conditioning, no finished walls, no plumbing of any kind. It was the winter. It was December. I went downstairs and I was freaking freezing my butt off. I was doing consulting work with a particular client where it was de facto, everyone was doing everything through a webcam. So if anyone was remote whatsoever, there was a webcam. In the conference rooms in the office in, in Manhattan, the screens were gigantic screens in every single conference room. 
So now I'm thinking, what the hell am I going to do? I'm in this freezing basement. I was wearing layers and layers of clothing. There was no heat, no insulation of any kind. I got portable heaters, portable fans. I actually purchased on Amazon an electric blanket that I put from the waist down. So I wrapped myself around it and I had these heating fans blowing on me. And so when I was sitting, I was trying to wear the thinnest but most insulated things that I could find. So I don't look like I'm wearing a winter parka in my own home. And then I'm like, okay, I got all of that resolved. By the way, my fingers were freaking freezing or like we we're talking, it was like five, 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, my fingers were freezing, touching my laptop. And uh, so what am I gonna do in terms of the background? It's okay, I'm good, but what about the background? Uh, we had clutter, like look at junk in the basement, like anyone, like most people have. Anyway, I went to Joanne's Fabric and I just bought a large piece of fabric, just dark red, I just picked any solid color, dark red, and I stapled it to the raw wooden beams in my basement. So it was just hanging behind me, this a dark red, uh, curtain essentially it looked like and I positioned various random uh, lamps that we had stored in the basement to be around me so I had the appropriate lighting which is another topic that's really important to think about so I had the appropriate lighting so it did not look like I was in a dark dingy basement we had some fake plant that was uh, in the basement. I put that next to me. So it's, at least it looked like I'm somewhat in a normal setting. And uh, basically every time I was in a meeting with someone, so A, they had absolutely no clue that I was in a dark dungeon of a basement. Uh, B, people were commenting with the dark red curtain behind me and the plant that it sort of looked like I was on a, set, a movie set from some really inappropriate kind of movies. But anyway, that was my quick little story like how, how I tried to improvise. And by the way, my sister was not allowed to know that I was in this freezing cold basement. We just get, she was too ill to go down. She's never been to the, she had never been to the basement. And we, uh, my family just kept telling her that, yeah, yeah, he's fine. Everything's, everything's good down there. He's just, he's working in his office. It's totally cool. Um, anyway, so that, that's how I improvise with these kinds of things. But uh, some of the things that you should think about even if you're in your bedroom and you don't want to open your camera that people should even see your bed because, hey, this is the workplace and it sort of like makes me cringe by having my coworkers look at my bed. Just back yourself up against any plain wall. Back yourself up against a closet door. They don't have to see anything. It's completely fine. Yes, you should be turning your camera on, going back to the point that I made before. Turning your camera on, there's a lot that, that gets expressed through body language, through facial expressions, even facial expressions as someone else is talking. You're not verbally saying anything. It's okay sometimes for them to see you roll your eyes, for them to see the excitement in your face as you're speaking. Um, the microphone, uh, make sure that people can actually hear you. I'm sure many of you have noticed that newscasters lately, um, they are working from home as well, whether it's CNN, NBC, uh, CBS, most of the newscasters are working from home. And you see that most of them are wearing AirPods. There's a reason for that. The AirPods were made, if you have nothing else, you don't even have to purchase any other equipment. The AirPods were made to cancel out most, not all, but most other background sounds that it tunes into your own voice and you can easily hear the other people without creating an echo. Now you might be wondering, okay, how come you're not wearing a headset? I actually use, I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm an Uber geek and I've been working remote for a long time, as I mentioned before, because I also do podcasting and YouTube videos. I have, as you can see over here, a podcaster's microphone, and I have the appropriate software that will also cancel out the echo so we don't have the reverberating sounds that we're all too painfully familiar with. Let's talk for a minute about, um, about lighting. So most people don't think uh, lighting, I'll put it both hand in hand, lighting and webcam. Most people don't think about these two things. Really, really important. The positioning of your webcam. First of all, if you have nothing else and all you have is the webcam that's built into your computer, uh, I will tell you just generally speaking, that webcam is probably of the lowest quality that you could probably find anywhere in the market today. I don't know why most laptop manufacturers do that, but the built-in webcam for most computers is of pretty terrible quality. If that's all you have, that's fine, work with it. But at least make sure that the positioning of that webcam, people should not be looking up your nose. People don't need to be staring at 
a double chin if you have it down there. At least position it. If all you have is a laptop, position your laptop, stack it up on a bunch of different books on whatever you need to. Use a milk crate if you have to. Just position the laptop in a way so that people, the camera should be somewhat eye level, that it should somewhat replicate an in-person interaction. They should be looking at you at eye level, not too high, not too low. They shouldn't be staring at the ceiling fan above you. They shouldn't be staring into your nostrils. They should be looking at eye level to you. Now, similarly with lighting, you don't have to go out. I do have geeky studio lighting, again, because I, I, I create YouTube videos and all, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you don't need to have that. You can use any lamps, any desk lamps, any, uh, any, other lamp, any other lighting fixtures that you have in your home and simply position them in a way if you want. You can also just use natural light to position yourself, not in front of a window, behind a window. You should be facing the window. So the natural sunlight is hitting your face. What happens when you're, when you're behind a window? A lot of people with the best of intentions, they put the window behind them. What happens is when the sun is coming from behind you, you are represented on video as nothing but a black silhouette. That's all you are a black silhouette. By the way, the reason why I have the lighting that I have over here, where I actually have two studio lights over here facing me at an angle, I also have this, I also have a, a, a light behind me. The reason why I have that is because when I had the normal lighting, there were regular spotlights that right now they're off. I have regular spotlights in this room. The reason why I have it is because prior to getting this lighting, when I use just the regular spotlights that are above me, um, my skin tone and the color of the wall behind me is almost exactly the same. So basically anytime I created a video for YouTube, the coloring of everything looked absurd, just completely absurd. So that's why I invested the time, and this is way before coronavirus, I invested the time and effort to try and figure out, I was going to paint the wall behind me and I realized I could just buy a cheap LED light that I could put any color. I don't give a damn what color it is, as long as it's a different color from my skin tone. And then get other studio lighting just to have it on me this way, so this way you don't have the overhead lighting from the, from the spotlights. So different, small, inexpensive things that you can do with everyday everyday things that you should have in your household, you can make the best of it without having to invest in anything at all. Anyway, I'm gonna move off of this topic, spend quite a bit on it. Let's talk about managing Salesforce projects because as, let's face it, as Salesforce admins, that's really what we're supposed to be doing. There are a lot of challenges that come into gathering of business requirements, confirming with someone that the, uh, like I mentioned before, the, the enhancements that you implemented, that they've actually reviewed it, that they've played around with it, that, that whether or not they have any feedback. When we've all been on the receiving end of someone says, I can't create a contact, it's broken. Can you fix it? I, everything worked yesterday. You don't know what the hell they were trying to do. What, what contact record type? What error message did you see? Which contact were you working with? Who were you logged in as? Which account was it supposed to be affiliated with? They're not giving you any of those details. They're just giving you vague information. And if you're not used to working with those people in a remote setting, if they are not used to being in a remote setting, they don't, they don't realize that they, don't have, that, that they have to give you all of those details. So you can either go back and forth with a hundred different emails or do you have a few minutes to get on a Zoom meeting where you could do a screen share and you could show me what's going on? Right. So like sort of take a step back, try to gather, get that clarity, go for a walk outside, get that, get, get, find your inner peace before you approach them and like, OK, let's do this in a calm way where it's far less frustrating for you, far less frustrating for me. And let's let's work on this together. Again, trying to simulate the in-person interactions that most of us were used to prior to all of us being stuck in our homes. So this is also true with regard to um, training users. Most people are very, uh, most comfortable with doing training in-person classroom style. And then what the heck do we do? By the way, one of the main things that I, uh, that I do as a business is also train people, whether it's training people to become Salesforce admins, to sit through the certification exam, or training end users. And as a trainer, it is way more 
exciting. Uh, it is way more impactful to do classroom style training. I can see the frustration, the, the facial expressions where someone is lost. I can see the excitement when someone gets it what I'm talking about. I can see where people think that I'm going too slow. I could tell in their facial expressions or if they're completely disconnected because like if I see, if I could tell that people are doing something completely different, like I'm explaining the difference between role and profile and you're typing, typing, typing away. I know that they're responding to an email or they're on Facebook or something else. And honestly, I also know later that when they're like, wait, can you explain that again? I have a little bit less patience for them because they weren't paying attention in the first place. But when it's all remote, you have no way of knowing. So I'm, I'm going to be the first person to say that when you're training people remotely, there are, it's, it becomes way more challenging, but it can be done. I do it all the time. It can be done. There are absolutely elements that, that are now missing from doing it remotely. But one of the major benefits of doing training remotely, by the way, is that you create a recording. And by the way, this is something that I learned when I was back at GE and I was responsible for training 2000 users across 10 different sub-businesses all over the US. And there was no way in the world I was able to pick a time slot where everyone was, was available to participate in the training. So I would schedule time, let's say I, I would email out everyone, I would put it in a chatter group, I'd tag everyone, you know, Monday and 10 a.m. Eastern, we're going to be doing training on, let's say, how to use leads and how to convert leads in Salesforce, or how to create your uh, activities, how to work with activities and longer calls in Salesforce. And I really didn't care if anyone attended or not. I use that as an opportunity to create that recording. And after, after I had that recording and I got through the entire curriculum, whether they attended or not, I emailed it out to everyone. Here's a link. It was great to see you. I don't care if two people joined. It was great to see everyone who joined. And by the way, for those who missed it or those who joined and they want to see a, a, do a replay of it, here's a link where you can access the recording. And this way it's available for them to watch over and over again because let's go back to the scenario of someone who wasn't paying attention in the classroom. And they're like, wait, can you explain to me, how did you get to that screen? They could just rewind themselves. They don't have to bother you. So there are definitely some benefits to doing training remotely. Anyway, oh, the, the last thing that I'm going to cover over here is the last bullet point. What have you been doing all this time? For a lot of us, especially during right now, where, where not only with the coronavirus issues and all of us working remotely, the economic impact and many businesses are seeing a dramatic economic shift. And a lot of people are really scared right now. They've either uh, been furloughed or lost their jobs or they're afraid of losing their jobs or they're freaking out of a job, like whatever it is. Um, there's a lot of concern of how do I justify my existence to try and keep my job as long as possible. So a lot of people are very concerned that their manager is thinking, what the hell are they doing? Should we even keep them on payroll? And by the way, whether your manager is actually thinking that or not, now is a good time for you to be proactive and showcase to demonstrate what it is that you are doing. And if, by the way, if things have slowed down so much at work that things are so quiet, find things that you can do yourself. Find the all the technical debt, run optimizer in your org, find the technical debt, the page layouts that no one's using, the record types that nobody is using, the roles and profiles that weren't assigned to anyone, the users who still have active licenses who have long left the company, find all of that kind of technical debt and clean up that crap. Make a list of everything that you're doing and showcase to whoever needs to know, your manager, it might be other users. Here are the different things that, by the way, while you've, while you've been quiet, here are the different things that I've done to make your life better. Go ahead and create content that's little snippets teaching them how to create list views, how to create reports and dashboards, how to find their open tasks, how to manage their own pipeline, how to use a Kanban view if they, they don't know how to use it. So find those little things and there are a gazillion of them by the way find little snippets of things that you can do short easy quick wins and that will help you justify your own existence and that will help you brag a little bit internally within your own organization of here's what i've been up to what about you and so that that should help you um not only stay productive and stay focused and feel like you're doing something that's helpful, but also it should help you get the most out of the job that you currently have. Anyway, that's it for me. Anyone have any questions? <laughs> I'm giving you your applause because we're not in person for you to hear it. Uh, amazing, amazing presentation, David. Uh, I definitely, I want to really support that last point that you just made. Um, Something I talked with uh, with Mike about on uh, the admin podcast recently was that a lot of admins are feeling this way. They're feeling like, oh my gosh, 
people don't think I'm important. People don't know what I do anyway. And now, um, you know, it's, it's time for me to go because they don't really need me anymore. Right. And, um, the tools that Salesforce has provided, like the optimizer, like the security assessment. Um, what I love about those tools is they're very easy for uh, managers and executives who don't know anything about Salesforce to understand them, right? You run the security assessment today and it says you're at a 57% and then you do some stuff and you run it in a week and it says you're at 80%. Oh my God, look at how amazing you did it in just a week, right? Like they don't have to know what the details of that security assessment are to know that you're doing stuff and it's making the work more successful. So I, I just really want to support that. If you're, you know, I feel like people fall into two camps right now, right? You're either in the camp where you don't have a lot to do or you're in the camp where you have too much to do, right? Um, and if you happen to be in that first camp, uh, absolutely, now is the time. I, I would love to have a little free time to go in and clean up some of the technical debt that I have in my org. Um, and I would definitely encourage folks to do the same. Really easy to do too with the reporting tools that Salesforce provides uh, to demonstrate that value. Yep, good stuff. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions or thoughts? <laughs> Turn on uh, the space heater in my basement as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. You know, I think a lot of great, uh, a lot of great feedback. Yeah, please. Oh, sure. Sorry. No, just like on the point about the technical debt, you mentioned that there's Salesforce reports that can help identify those pieces and things like that. Um, like, are those just native to Salesforce or are they present in a managed package somewhere? Like, what's a quick way to gather all of those things um, so that we can start to optimize? Actually, if you give me a second, I can share my screen. I'm going to log into a demo org that I have and show you. And actually, this is something that I'm doing a webinar on next week. Uh, oh, so the topic excellent. is actually near and dear to my heart. Uh, just logging into this org right now, and as soon as I'm in, okay, great. Now let me go and share my screen. Da, da, da. Uh, nope, that's not what I want to share. I want to share Google Chrome, that window. Here we are. And let me position this in a way where... Okay, so you guys should be able to see. Yeah, you see my full screen. All right, yes. so I'm in this demo org. All the data in here is completely fake. So if you see anything here, no, it's not actually real customers. I use this org for demoing and for training purposes. So I'm going to go into setup. And then once I go into setup, all you have to do is do a search for optimizer. And once you go ahead and select optimizer on the left hand side, you're going to see over here, um, all you really have to do is click on this neat button over here, create PDF. And once you do it, you're going to get a notification. Okay, great. Um, then uh, as it says, uh, this process may take a few minutes to a few hours, depending on the size of your org. We'll upload the full report to Salesforce files. You're gonna get an email notification as soon as it's done. And then once you do that, I think I should have, there we go. I have some older ones that I did uh, in the past. Um, it's going to appear directly in your org and you will also get that email notification. You'll have a direct link to get to this file as well. Come on, baby, let's go. Seriously, gigabit, come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if I should just download it and open the PDF if that's faster. Like, holy crap, it's not even that big of a file. Okay, wait, let me download this baby. Uh, and you know what, here. Okay, that's easier. Um, all right, so this is the document. You can see this one, and this is a small uh, developer org. There's not a whole lot of data. There's not a whole lot of configuration. Um, don't be intimidated. This one is 91 pages. Don't be intimidated if yours is 300 pages long. It, it could very easily be 300 pages long. Um, so basically what it's going to do is there are a gazillion hyperlinks throughout this entire document that's going to walk you through not only content within the document. So the, the table of contents over here, it's going to, uh, these are shortcuts to other content within the the 91 page document, but there are also hyperlinks within each area. So here we see like monitor limits summary. 
I don't have anything that's really problematic in here. But if I did, if I had, let's say, way too much storage that's going to uh, be close to exceeding my storage capability for the license that I have, this needle indicator would be all the way on the right hand side. Now watch this. If I go ahead and I click into this, it's going to bring me directly to the page in this uh, extensive PDF where it gives me even more detail. And down here in this section, I have help resources to learn more about this topic. So let's go over here to something uh, that, that's going to be way more common. So here, watch field usage. I just clicked on it. It's showing me that I have 37 fields that were completed less than 10% of the time within the last three months. So if I'm curious, okay, what fields are they? Watch this. All I have to do is keep scrolling. And now here I can see it's broken down by object. I can click on, let's say, opportunity. It takes me directly to the opportunity fields. These are the fields in my org that the optimizer has found as being um, uh, not popular, uh, not, not utilized um, recently. So this is going to show you extensive details based on the user, based on the browsers that the users are using, based on unassigned page layouts, unused reports, unused dashboards, um, detail, whether or not the details tab is on the record pages. It's going to show you a lot of really cool stuff. A lot of areas where you can improve. This and is better than I would have imagined. Thank you. This is awesome. <laughs> and, and then there's several free tools out on the App Exchange that you can use this as your starting point to then extend out to. So like the field usage. Uh, before we had the optimizer and everything, one of my favorite tools as an admin was Field Trip. Yep, absolutely. Free. I mean, you, you can run all sorts of conditions, but in the end, what you get is a list of your unused fields or unused by record type or whatever. If you, if you can throw in a simple where clause and a sock will statement, you can start to dive in even more. Um, the something else that I would throw on there as well that you could be doing is documenting your org. Go through the fields and, and start filling in help text or the, um, the, the description fields on the back end. Um, there's other tools out there like Octopus that will go query that for you and tell you where you have gaps. But um, any, I'm saying this now as a consultant, any opportunity that you have once we get to normal, any opportunity that you have that you can provide value for your internal stakeholders or if you bring in consultants or whatever, if you can get ahead of that, that is so much value for you to showcase. I love the word that David used of showcase any of that stuff, just do it, be a hero. Hey, hey, David, can you, do you still have that demo org pulled up? Yeah, uh, hang on, I'll let me go back to it. Can you uh, real quick show health check too? I love health check. Yeah. That's the one I was thinking about with the percentage. If, if, if you're an admin and you've never run health check on your org, go run it, you'll be surprised. Um, there's a, a nifty little tool. And what I love about health check and what your, what your security, your InfoSec team will love about Health Check is you can set your own benchmarks as well. So you can actually, out of the box, there's a, a benchmark that it uses to kind of grade your org. But if that doesn't align with what your organization needs, you can actually write your own criteria, basically, and measure your Health Check against that. So yeah, Health Check, it's awesome. So it's going to do a little calculation um, on your security settings and give you a grade. And this dev org is very poor. So it'll tell you exactly what needs to get fixed, what the critical things are, um, and actually let you take action right from here to fix those things um, within your org. So this is a really super simple way to be like, look, what have you been doing lately? Well, I turned our org from a security risk to uh, you know, an org that is actually nice and tight and secure. Um, and I went from a 48 to a 70. Um, and, and along with that, I would get screenshots showing how it was Absolutely. up initially, initially and two weeks later, it's now a 90%. Yeah, I would, I would wait to send the 48 one until you fixed it so they don't freak <laughs> out. <laughs> you can have all sorts of ideas if yeah. you send them the 48. <laughs> yeah, from personal experience, wait till you fix the stuff first because um, they don't like getting that 48 email. Anyway, another great, awesome tool. Optimizer is incredible. Health check is great. If you're not on Lightning yet, first of all, what are you doing? Second of all, run the, run the Lightning readiness assessor. And, you know, Salesforce would love it if you ran some of the other readiness assessors too, right? Thinking about Einstein? Go do the Einstein readiness assessor, right? Um, there's lots of cool little tools like that uh, on platform that can help you, you know, guide the organization forward as you hear about 
the next project that's coming because of COVID-19, right? Um, you can be like, hey, I got a solution for that. Good stuff. Thank you so much, David. I really, really, really Thank appreciate you. the presentation. Thank you, really for appreciate your me. thoughts and your expertise. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I saw in the chat, Dale, that Shauna had to jump off. So <laughs> um, I think we need to leave the gift card winner announcement to you. Um, All right. Do you want to uh, let the folks know at home who the big winners are? I do. So first, we have Mark Kelly. Congratulations. Woohoo! Um, we will, if you want to uh, email us, the, the Kansas City group, which will be in the deck um, that we share out later, just pop us an email so that we have your contact info and we can send it over, and that might actually be you. You're saying woohoo, fantastic. Um, or actually, you can um, send me a private message here in the chat with your email address so that not everybody sees it and I'll take that down. Um, and then our second winner, I am super, super excited about because <laughs> a former colleague of mine, Kanisha Williams. Woo! Congratulations, Kanisha. All right. That's what you get for being here and uh, being here for the virtual session and sticking around. You have 35 participants left and uh, you're here. Must be present to win. That's, that's how I feel about it. So good job. Um, Awesome stuff. And Dale, uh, you are going to facilitate the, the communication on that. I am. Perfect. Yes. So cool. we have about 20 minutes until I have to steal my Zoom line away and actually, you know, do work. <laughs> um, but uh, Jeff, you want to kind of have an open floor on summer 20? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm always ready to talk about release notes. I don't know about anybody else and, and preview process and all that stuff. Um, and I should actually call out earlier. Uh, I don't remember. It's way up at the top of the chat, but um, someone had mentioned uh, work.com. If anybody what? else is looking a great at point. work.com, a great new thing to, to be thinking about. Is anybody looking at work.com? I'm curious to know what kind of the, the ecosystem's reaction to work.com is. I'll give you my two cents. Uh, there's not a lot of specifics yet. I've, I've reached out to my AE about it, right? And I've heard... Yeah, a lot of it's partially available. A lot of it's only available to health organizations right now. So um, there's still a lot of question marks around it. But has anyone gone further down the path than I have? I'd love to hear. Do people know what work.com is? Maybe not. Well, let's, let's do that first here. Hold on. Let me share my... I can't really wrap my head around what it all is. That is a very fair point. Yeah, I think that's kind of what I've been hearing from folks as well, right? Like, what is it? What does it mean? And of course, you know, the first question that I always find myself asking is, how does the licensing work? Um, <laughs> because that's, uh, that's what everybody wants to know. So um, work.com is, is billed as a suite of products that facilitate a return to the workplace. Um, I, know, I know the things that my organization was interested in was uh, they were the contact tracing um, component um, and some of the for our retail center some of the shift management and planning as you can see most of these have coming soon on here still um, and that is very much the response I've gotten from my account executive is they don't even have pricing for a lot of this stuff um, contact tracing like I said is still only available for private and public health institutions um, so I, I haven't seen or heard of anybody actually using any of the tools yet, <laughs> um, but would love to hear more from folks. Uh, and certainly if you haven't yet, but you're exploring it, um, please share in the community if you have conversations or you stand any of this stuff up, because I think we're all really curious to know how it's going to work. Cool. Yeah, check out work.com. Uh, the, the demos, I mean, inspiring, of course. Um, Summer, summer release notes, baby. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to look at a summer yet, um, you know, we were talking at the beginning of the call, right? The headlines are of course, dynamic forms and dynamic actions, right? Um, I think this is a really interesting, a really interesting move. Um, uh, there's a lot of things I like about it, but I think it's admins. Um, it definitely adds a layer of complexity for us in terms of uh, administration and, um, 
I think there's a real uh, possibility here that if, if we're not careful about how you use the tool, um, you're just going to result in kind of transferring technical debt from one spot to another spot. Um, so what, what are dynamic forms and dynamic actions? Um, dynamic forms and dynamic actions. Let's do dynamic forms first. So this is in preview in summer. And basically what it, what it lets us do as admins is gone is the monolithic record detail. Well, not gone, you can still use it if you want to. Um, but what you'll see in App Builder is you'll see a new tab in the App Builder for fields. And you'll actually be able to create individual field sections or even just drag individual fields onto a page. Um, and obviously there's some really exciting things about that, right? One, that means whole field sections or even individual fields can be conditionally rendered, um, which is really cool when you think about Salesforce as like a wizard or a process-driven application. Um, it means, it might mean that you don't have to have as many page layouts as you used to, right? Because you can kind of chuck everything on a page layout and then show or hide things um, as needed on a Lightning app page. Um, that's kind of as I was saying about technical debt, right? Is it worth it to move everything from 10 page layouts to one page layout just to then have to go create 10 Lightning app pages? I don't know. Or how difficult is it going to be to manage the conditional visibility on a Lightning app page? I don't know. Um, but definitely something that is really exciting. I know for me, um, I've always wanted to be able to do exactly this thing. And I've resorted to doing, you know, related record things. Um, with quick actions, and that's gotten me by, uh, but this is really taking it to the next level. Any questions about dynamic forms or uh, how how it's going to work? Um, this this release notes here tells you kind of exactly how it, how it's going to go. Um, it is just a it is just a preview in summer, uh, but it's a, a it's something that I think is really exciting. We should all become familiar with and start thinking about, especially if you're in a project right now. Um, or you're working with a consultant right now, uh, this is something you want to take into consideration as you're thinking about what your page layout or record type structure or lightning page layout structure is going to look like. So if you, I'm admittedly asking because I've only seen the headlines. I've been in discovery with a client since the release notes came out last week, but mm -hmm. is part of the, the dynamic and the conditional going to include required versus unrequired fields? So not at not in this round, at least, um, that I've seen. Uh, so that's something that is, is an idea that's out there. Um, this initial version is a very dumbed down version of what it's going to be. Um, as you can see, you know, there's a whole section over here for field components. And right now there's one thing in it, right? So in the future, there's going to be more things, uh, lots of different ways to display stuff. I don't think there's anything today for conditional requirements on the road. Um, I'll tell you, I mean, just speaking from experience, the way that I've solved that in the past is using the related record component and using different update actions that reference the existing record that you're on. So, um, so it my last loops it back up kind of a thing. Right. And just, and you show, so like my, uh, my, my last stop, um, there was a requirement for um, when, when an account was, a prospect, you know, I want these five things front and center, and they're all required, right? When you're on, when you need to update that action, right? Or maybe two of them are required or whatever. But then when they're a customer, those things feed in from another system, so they need to be read only on the platform, right? Well, how do you do that without different page layouts? Mm -hmm. That kind of sucks, right? So my solution was use the related record component, create a customer update action, and a prospect update action and conditionally render the action based on the status of the account. And one of the actions, the fields were read only and one of the actions, the fields were editable or required as needed. Um, so that, that's a great workaround for now. I don't know if that's on the future roadmap or not, but uh, I, don't, I haven't seen anything about it yet. Um, I think because I have used that workaround in the past, the thing that I'm most excited about is not even dynamic forms, it's dynamic actions, um, which is the other kind of dynamic piece of this. Um, let me go to dynamic actions. I think this is huge because um, at this point, 
I don't ever, I rarely make new page layouts. I do most things on the Lightning App page builder these days. Um, but the thing that drives me to make a new page layout is different actions. And the fact that now in the future, I'm gonna be able to enable dynamic actions and allow actions, uh, basically a customizable action bar per light or within a lightning page, and then even be able to conditionally render individual actions within that bar is such a huge step forward. Um, so in this example, they're saying that this clone record has a particular visibility uh, condition on it. So, you know, maybe you only want to be able to clone it if it's closed, right? And you need to make a new version or something like that. Um, you can actually do this within the highlights panel um, within a record page. Um, I think this is a, a monumental step forward to be able to set, especially, especially when you think about combining that with flow actions, because now you're talking about whole processes that can be added or subtracted to or from a page uh, layout based on criteria on the page or even based on criteria of the end user. Um, you know, maybe only certain people should be able to run the account maintenance flow on a particular account, right? Um, well, I don't have to create a whole new, I don't have to create a whole new page layout for that one person or group of people, right? I don't have to use the flow component to conditionally render it based on that. I just add it as an action and say, hey, only people with this perm set can see this button that launches the flow, right? I think that's super, super duper powerful. Um, Again, it is beta, right? These are both the first kind of foray into this dynamic stuff, but I think it's a great window into where Salesforce is going with how they want to drive their application development, right? Um, I don't know about everybody else, but you know, when when Lightning App Builder first or Platform App Builder first came out, I was like, well, "What is this? What even is this?" Like, the App Builder is like a little tool, and it doesn't really do a whole lot. I mean, this was you know back in the day when App Builder was brand new, right? Um, but you know, we're now really finally starting to see that app builder vision coming to life, right? Uh, the idea that, um, you know, an admin or an admin could create an action and then turn over that action um, to an app builder um, who maybe is even closer to the business than the admin is um, to help facilitate the UI um, and the UX on the page. It's, it's now, not to be the uh, the potential pessimist or the devil's no, advocate please. here, but with anything, and this is especially for new entrants into Salesforce, uh, Salesforce is kind of notorious for having pilot and beta programs that never get G8. So mm -hmm. while the toys are super cool to play with, don't become overly dependent on them until you know they're becoming GA. How many of you were around for flow triggers and absolutely loved them and then were like, what the heck, they're gone. Now it's process builder. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and now years later, they're finally coming around to flow triggers again. <laughs> you're right, exactly. But um, just case in point, like it's, it's really um, obviously like dive in head first and, and fall in love with it. But be cautious. Don't don't put them everywhere because there are no guarantees with um, with pilot and beta. On the other side of it, going back to we talked at the the top about um, ideas prioritization coming out. Be if you do dive in and you start using these things, also go to prioritization. Go to the idea exchange. Start. If you're invested in it, start giving back to Salesforce with your feedback because you may be part of the movement that gets it from a pilot or a beta into GA. Or you may be in the movement that says, this is hot garbage. What's wrong with you? Get it out now. Um, but that, that's, that's the beauty of the ecosystem that we're in is that you do actually have a voice. Now, I know some ideas are 10, 12 years old, and I've, I've avoided Twitter fights with a lot of people that bring that up. But you do have a voice. So fall in love with this stuff, use it, figure it out, and give your feedback. Really great point. Um, I, uh, I want to touch on uh, just two more quick things or a couple more quick things. Uh, one is this. So I love split view and console, but I generally hate console. Um, I don't know. It's, I'm old school in that way. Uh, I, I still haven't totally like, made the move to console. But if you haven't used split view before, it's pretty awesome because it lets you work with a list view and an individual record at the same time. And I love that they're gonna bring list view or split view to the standard navigation. So all of your standard apps now, your standard sales app, your standard service app, et cetera, 
are going to be able to leverage split view. Here's a quick example of split view, right? Here's your standard table view of leads. Here's your split view of leads. And now you've selected a record here on the left and you can work through that lead list and pull up each individual record side by side. Um, super duper powerful um, and uh, super exciting. In my opinion, I think it's a, a great parity thing. I shouldn't have to work in console if I don't want to just to get split view. So I think this is really cool. Um, and then I also wanted to call out this. We talked about things that we can do in our time, right? And training and documentation is certainly part of it. Um, I don't know if anyone's had much of a chance to play with in-app guidance, but another cool new included tool, although admittedly some of the new things they're rolling out this time uh, require additional investment. But step through uh, some of the trails out there for in-app guidance and understand um, what you need to do uh, to build out some of this in-app training. I think uh, another great opportunity, especially when working remotely, let the app do the work for you. Um, you know, build out that that guidance prompt um, and let it surface to users when they're taking the action um, within their own time, right? Uh, you know, especially if it's little functionality, right? I find that using little prompts like this uh, is much easier than trying to rally the troops and have a big presentation or trust that everyone's reading my email or my chatter post. Um, I get reporting on who who did the thing, who clicked accept, and who said, no, I'm not gonna look at this right now. Um, so that's really valuable, not specifically who, but general numbers. Um, so there's they've really beefed up the, the lighting experience engagement stuff. Again, the multi-step walkthrough, for example, is not free. There's some things in here that are not free um, or not included, uh, but I think they've still made some significant enhancements and it's worth checking out probably if you haven't already. And then the last thing, the beginning and the end for me, um, I despise this with all my being, but it was like the number one thing in the prioritization. My prioritization didn't work. Um, and I'm sure there will be a lot of people out there who are excited about it. Um, when you run a report subscription, you can now choose to receive results as a CSV file attached to the subscription email. So, you know, the second that report script, subscription runs, you too can get stale, out of date, potentially inaccurate data to your end users um, because they desperately needed an Excel instead of using it on the platform. Um, so again, this is beta. It's not GA yet. Maybe they'll decide it's a bad idea. Um, but as you can see right there, say attach file when you go set up that subscription. Um, important to note that just like with any report subscriptions, you still can't add it to random email inboxes, right? So this isn't gonna let you get around your licensing uh, requirements, unless of course, you know, you wanna set up a, a relay for particular report subscriptions, which I would never condone, uh, but I know people have done. Um, this is cool, I guess, to a lot of people. So it's available uh, starting in summer 20 as beta. I think for some yeah. people it might be a, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't love yeah. doing this, but at least now I don't have to do it manually. Like it, yeah. There's, um, there's still. If only, if only you trained your users to go get the report data directly from the application. This is the thing with humans. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell them why it's awesome, but it's up to them to believe it. Like consuming all your data in the live system versus Excel. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, Humans. Oh, speaking of humans, humans uh, still insist on using um, Lightning Experience in Safari on iPads instead of using the mobile app. Um, and that also, uh, that's a good call out. You know, all my executives use their, uh, their iPads. Um, and so I just wanted to point out that they are uh, granting full desktop-like experience uh, for the iPad uh, for Safari. Uh, GA in summer. So if you have executives who use iPads who always complain about Lightning Experience, you can tell them help is on the way coming in the summer 20 release. Um, and just for anybody who was wondering, IE 11 and older, still not going to run Lightning. That's right. Ever, 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 nope. no matter how much they ask, it ain't going to work. That's right. That's right. Cool. Um, that, those were the, really the, the highlights that I wanted to cover. I mean, there's a ton of stuff in there, obviously, for industries. I know there's a ton of things for me in Financial Services Cloud. Um, and there's a ton of other stuff on the mobile side. Um, Einstein Voice uh, and Einstein Voice Assistant, if you haven't started checking that out yet, that's definitely coming. 
Um, but uh, I think those were some of the really big things um, that came out that really affect everybody um, that I wanted to highlight when we have such a mixed audience on the call. Cool. Well, it's four minutes still until the time where we need to say goodbye. Um, so I think <laughs> to, <laughs> to make things uh, easy on you, um, I think we'll wrap it up. Big, huge thanks to Shauna again, who isn't on the call anymore. Huge thanks to David for being here. Really, really appreciate y'all's engagement um, and bringing some awesome content to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, Dale, thanks so much for organizing and thanks to everyone else for being here um, and sticking out with us for the whole two hours. We really appreciate that. Thank you, MC Berger. And uh, next week we'll have a, sometime next week I'll get the registration link out for the next meeting on June 18th. Perfect. See y'all then. Thanks everyone. Be well. Be well.